Hey, you want to do an interview? Someone taught me how to snort Ritalin. Somebody ex ex uh, introduced me to ecstasy is when it was just all open from there. And how My eyes were open. How old were you when you started doing ecstasy? Uh, <clears throat> 14. and foremost, we are reporting live from Detroit, Michigan. It is September 1st, 2023. We downtown. It's a nice day right here on State and Bridge Road. Where we at? Capitol Park? Uh, yeah. Capitol Park? Okay. Yeah. And today, I got my man Ziggy with me. Yeah. So, Ziggy, I, I caught you walking to work, right? Yeah. Um, asked Ziggy for an interview. Ziggy didn't have time, so I walked him to work, and um, yeah, it's, it's, you want to tell him how we got I started? guess it was fate, because I walked to work, I just got this job, so it was my second day that I walked to work, she, uh, they happened to not need me today, so, <clears throat> I, when I, as soon as I, as soon as she told me that, I turned around and tried to find, uh, find this young lady to give the interview because I've always actually been wanting to try to share a little bit of my story to people, you know? And I appreciate you for that. So, first and foremost, tell me how long you've been living out here in these streets. About 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. Okay, and how old are you? 38. 38. So, what led you to this path? Well... You know, my childhood was a little rocky and stuff. Can't say that I was poor or anything like that, but you know, just didn't really have any parental figures around, so I started using drugs at a real young age. I was 12. Someone taught me how to snort Ritalin, so that was the first thing I ever did as a drug. Did that for like, till I was 20, but I also started, you know, smoking weed and drinking and everything like that, just doing the party life. Gotcha. I just the people that I, uh, happened to be around that's just they they were like the partiers taking ecstasy acid stuff like that you know and where did you grow up at uh melvindale okay yeah okay melvindale and lincoln park all you that had both parents house? <clears throat> no no my parents were divorced when i was two okay and then my mom just passed 10 years ago yeah okay so you lived with your mom no 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 she passed away 10 years ago Oh, I'm sorry to hear so, that. Yeah. Who did you live with? My, my father. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they got divorced and you actually went with your dad. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. And my, my dad, he was a full-time worker, workaholic, you know, he was, he was there working all the time, barely ever seen him, you know, but when I did, you know, it wasn't always, it was barely ever good, you know, I was always trying to find it. You know, take his frustration out on me when he Any gets home. Or no, no, no. He not when you know he did like when I was real young, but you know that didn't really. It wasn't that that affected things. It was his his work and his anger. He come take it out on me, you know. Gotcha. So that was also kind of what got me to just say F it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, you said that somebody got you snoring the rhythm at yeah. 12. Yes. Let's get into that. Mm -hmm. like, what was that experience? Well, my, I was a, I was a hyper kid, you know, growing up. Okay. And I was, it was around the era where seemed like all parents were trying to get their kids on Ritalin. Mm -hmm. Like, they were a little hyper giving Ritalin, you know? They even had a South Park episode on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh... Everybody had so, ADHD and Right, mm -hmm. right. So, my dad puts me on it, thinks it's, it's gonna be the, the answer, you know, and, uh... I took it. I didn't like, you know, I'd be at, at work, at school, like, you know, doing my work, homework and everything, doing, you know, focus. Like, right. it did work, but right. turned me into a zombie. I didn't like it. I wasn't talkative. I wouldn't talk to people, you know, so I just, I stopped taking it. And I had a friend in school. She had found out I had it. And she kept asking me for them. She said, well, let me get them. If you don't want them, let me, let me get the ones you get. So I was, you know, and then 
And then at one time I even gave her a whole script of them because mm -hmm. I just had them. And in she was the final. same age as he. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So About she 12. already had. A, yep. Uh, oh, she was already taking. Habit this girl she... was already taking mescaline. She was already smoking weed and stuff, you know, with her family at yeah. that time. So. You know, wow. she was already you know, about that, you know? Right. Right. So, when I give her the bottle, she, I, I finally ask her, I said, what do you do with this stuff? What the hell are you doing? Uh -huh. And she hands me two pills back in my hand and says, take these home and snort them. And let me know how you feel. And I'm thinking to myself, like, the only thing I knew about snorting was Scarface, you know? Uh -huh. Like, that's the only reason I knew it, to put things up your nose right. is from that, you know? So I did. Because you're 12. Like, right, right, right. So I did, though. I, you know, I did the best I could, you know, what I knew and sure. snorted it. She never got a free pill. big ass chunks. He probably ain't break it down. Oh, yeah. No, no. I used a spoon, actually. Yeah. So I actually did it pretty like, decent. How did, how did you but I didn't use a straw. I didn't even know to use a straw. I just crushed it. Yeah, and, you know, but... And what was Long story saying? short, oh, it was all the things that I didn't like about snorting it. Is it was that time ten? Like I was super talkative. I had energy. I felt better about myself because I had low self esteem and stuff. Snorted it gave me it gave me you know confidence and what? stuff. So and ecstasy like, started doing that for me too. But that's you know that's a different story. But so like basically the the side effects from the Ritalin when you take it orally. It's the fucking opposite from when you take it snorting. snorting. Yeah, and it's also different. It also kind of depends on whether or not you actually do have ADHD or not. If you actually do have, like, full-blown ADHD, most time it doesn't. It'll, it'll just calm you down anyway. Okay. But, you know, but in my case, I thought I had ADHD because, I, you know, I did have all the symptoms, but when I snorted it, it just... It didn't like zoom me around like a super speed, but it was just, you know, it gave me energy, it gave me right. confidence, it gave me, you know, the ability to talk to people, which I like, you right. know. So, okay, at this time you're 12. Mm -hmm. You snorted it. Did you go back to school like, hey? Yeah, no, she got another free one. She never got a free one again. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it was, it, it was a wrap for me. Right. Yeah, she screwed herself on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I sell her some here and there, but no, it was. And so, did your daddy ever find out you was snorting the Ritalin? No, I never told him about that. He really? he did eventually. He found out that I was, you know, smoking weed first, and, you know, and he had suspicions about other stuff. When I was about 18, because my dad smoked weed too back mm -hmm. when I was younger, and uh, when I was about 18, he finally, because we did not, me and my dad didn't have a way to connect, you know what I mean? We never just, we never bonded, you know, until when I was 18, he decided to hand me a joint. And then after that, we was like, like this yeah. for a while. Like we actually found that connection, right? you know? And, uh, but then, but then after that, he didn't know that I was also drinking and, you know, and I was taking, I took a lot of ecstasy. I okay. Was, so when did you start trying other stuff? Uh, after the weed? No, after the rip. Well, I started weed right around when I was 12, too. Okay, okay. Yep. So, you and drinking. weed and a Ritalin around the same time. Yeah, and it's drinking. Well, yep. Oh, yeah, and drinking. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, at school in junior high, you know, all my friends that before school was over, we'd all ask each other, you got your $2. Yeah, what school did you all go to? <laughs> Melvindale Junior High. Wow. Well, at this time, I was so junior high. We had, you know, uh, my friend's uh, sister and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, older friends. Or i go play Hey Mister, you know, at the store and get someone to buy it. I always find a way, but, yeah, yeah it was, uh, but it was always, all it took was $2 back then. Because, you know, you a kid, all it takes is a 40 ounce. I mean, that's what we got. Everybody got 40, ran around drunk stuff, you know. Right. But it was when somebody ex ex uh, introduced me to ecstasy is when it was just all open from there. And my eyes were open. How it old was, were you when you started going ecstasy? Uh, 14. Okay. And so by this time, were you in high school yet, or you were still in the eighth grade? I, I was still in eighth grade, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all the stuff that the uh, that the Ritalin did with did for me, mm -hmm. so did the ecstasy, but it was more clear and more... Before it comes? Yeah, and the confidence and everything it was like I, I thought i was superman i literally stood two inches taller <laughs> when i was on that stuff so you know and then i got hooked on the 
the, the selling the game too. You got hooked on oh, the game is selling it, yeah. Because yeah. all my friends, they they want it too, you know. And I had been to when I was I was six, seventeen, uh -huh. and I ended up getting arrested for uh, possession of ecstasy. Okay. And How much did you have on you? I had a pill and three quarters, actually, and okay. two pills is a felony. So the guy gave me a break. And two pills is a felony. Yeah, and it was only a pill and a half. Like it was because I had a half I took. Mm -hmm. and, and you was you said eighteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, nothing happened with it. I ended up. I didn't end up going to jail for it or anything, but. My family found out, you know, mm -hmm. and my uh, my stepbrother, he he was uh, driving me home from my dad's one day, and he told tells me he's like, "Well, I heard you got a, you know, got arrested," and say, so, "Yeah, they you let know, you go? yeah, they let, you know, they did, they let me, they just let it go pretty much, yeah. you know, I had to pay a couple fines, but but my brother was like, well, after that, do you still do it?" And I'm thinking at, at, at the time, like, maybe my brother's trying to spy on me or something, to tell my dad something. I was like, no. And this your older brother? Yeah, my older, he's my stepbrother, but okay. he's a few older, years older than me. But he said, well, I, I was just curious because I, I sell him now, <laughs> so he said. I said, well, in that case, you know. And you, so y'all was living in the same house? My brother, no, no, no. Okay. He was driving me from my dad's. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah. So we lived in separate. We, he lived in Lincoln Park. On my stepmom's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he lived in Lincoln Park, not far from Melvindale. Okay. And then, so anyway, after that, I started buying them off of him mm -hmm. for cheap. That's when the when the selling game started. Cause I'd sell them for twenty dollars, getting them for three, four dollars a piece. Right. And then that that fed my habit too mm -hmm. it was like a prescription at that time i wake up take two take one and, and you know it was like a daily thing right you right. know it was just yeah it was like by by then by 17 18 i was wide open like so when did your family okay let me, let me ask you this first when did you first feel like you had a problem or you was addicted when i was 21 actually when i was uh it was at the end it was it was with ecstasy and like drinking a lot and stuff and i actually went to my dad and talked to him and i told him about the alcohol and stuff mm -hmm. and that was when i went to my first rehab when i was 21. very first rehab my in. dad checked me in since it was his and she had such good insurance it, it was at uh maple grove in west bloomfield okay and then i even went to that rehab mm -hmm. it was like a five-star place okay. but it was my first time and you know, and I thought it was gonna. Hold on, wait. Let's wait to this car pass. It's a motorcycle. Right. Okay, so. So I see this this rehab, and I'm like, okay, maybe this can help me. Mm -hmm. You know. And while I was there for two days, the nurse calls me up to the to the to the desk and says, "Oh, well, here, there's some of these meds you can take at your bedside." She handed me my Ritalin back to me, <laughs> the nurse, and said I could take that at my bedside. Now I told her that I, I told her that I was I told them all that I was in for alcohol and amphetamines, ecstasy is an amphetamine, so is Ritalin. Exactly. I don't know what they were thinking. So amphetamines. Right. Yeah. So granted, that didn't work. You know, I got a room with a, a bathroom and a lock on the door. What do you, you know, what do you think I'm gonna do with my first rehab? <laughs> of course, so I'm, I got my drug in my hand, my drug of choice in my hand in my, you know, private room. Yeah, so you crush So I'm head. running around, yeah, and I'm yeah. running around the rehab high. So they get ready to discharge me at the end and said, do you feel that you need more treatment? I said, hell yeah, I need more treatment. I told them right there, I said, you gave me my drug, you gave me my drug of choice and I've been doing it since I've been here. I told him, if I don't tell him, because I was a little upset, you yeah, know, that like, yeah. you're going to set someone up, someone up like that. For real. So after that, I had to wait a few oh. more days. I had to think about the dogs over here. But, uh, so after that. I had a few more days for, before I go to, to the new, to the other rehab. So my dad let me stay at the house, but there was a lot of people in the house I was just saying, so the house was full. But he had a whole camper in the backyard. Okay. Which it was even better for me. Like, okay, my own little place. 
But I, when I got out of rehab, I still got my, my bottle of Ritalin and a lot of them. And I'm by myself, you know, in a camper. So I'm like... So you left rehab with the Ritalin? Yeah. So I'm in my camper by myself, not knowing what, you know, already like upset because I have to get you know, everything to happen with the rehab. I'm making lines like this. Yeah. And like a long story short, I ended up doing so much. Yeah. I ended up doing so much of it. I almost, like, I almost kind of like fried my brain and had a heart attack. I had to call my best friend on the phone because I couldn't, I couldn't even form words. I talked to her and I was just like mush. Like for like, uh, um, uh, you know, I couldn't even, I didn't even, but she knew what was, she knows me and she knew what was up. Right. So she heard that, she said, you know, I don't, the best thing I know to tell you to help, to help you is to get some Xanax and, and sleep. And that's what you did? Yep. I, I ended up texting my dad and I knew, my dad knew that I was in a hard time right then and he took Xanax. So he gave me a couple. Okay. And with no issue. So I took those and went to bed. But that almost killed me. I almost died that day. I didn't realize at first how close I was to death until I really, I looked back at it. Yeah. So I went to my doctor the next week. I got rid of the rest of the Riddler. Okay. And I went to my doctor and told him exactly what I was doing with him and to never give me give him to me again. Cause it, you know, that just, that kind of opened my eyes on that. And, and first of all, that's, that's not something to just, you know, like look over. Like that's, right. a, that's some strong shit you did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's some strong shit. Oh yeah. Literally did something to take control of your addiction. Exactly. And, and you were still 21 at this time. Wasn't right. You? Yeah, yeah, yep. like. Nobody and that was, that. and that was it. I so, would never go to the dispensary and tell them not to. <laughs> right, right, right. And that was the thing too. Is just like you said. Is that's what I thought. Is I, that's when I, what I for sure realized is I, I was losing control, and I wanted some of that control back. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's exactly why I did it. Is if like if if anything is gonna happen, I'm gonna stop this myself. Yeah. Like you know. Okay, so how did you lose control again? Well, I was still, t I mean, I, okay, I went, I went to a rehab after that, and I was sober for a year. Okay. And, because I was in the program for a year. Okay. And then after that. You, you were in the um, in, in I, rehab for a year straight? Yes. Okay. Yes. It was the Salvation Army. It? it was the Salvation Army. Okay. It was free. <laughs> okay. Um, and Where then. Was that at? Salvation Army is down in Fort, Fort and uh, Trumbull. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I believe, good, I think I've met, I met a girl, that's what it was. Okay. And I met the wrong girl. When so I ended up. time, what you, 23 or 22? About 22, yeah. Okay. Uh, this shit. Yeah, and I ended, we ended up doing starting crack. That's what, that's what I lost control over mm. again. I found so that how stuff. How the hell did she just, get you to start crack? It was something that she was kind of, I guess she was kind of sneaking doing it for a minute. Uh -huh. And then so I guess something just, she was telling you sneaking, so she asked me if I wanted to do something. And before this, I, I did, you know, to jump back, I, I, I tried it my first time when I was 19. Okay. I did it like twice, you know, okay. Okay. and I did like it, you know, but you I, I did. Okay. But I liked it so much, it scared me. Really, I did. So I didn't, okay. you know. So I kind of tried to stay away from as right. much as possible because I realized well, once I, you obviously still had your control. Oh well, yeah, you you right, right. Because yeah. yeah. but I did. I I felt that feeling though. I felt that urge to continue. Mm -hmm. So you know the, that grab it had on me. So Do you think that you didn't get addicted to the crack at nineteen because you were still doing like the I was doing other stuff. Shit. Yeah, okay. yeah, and ecstasy and all right. that. So, so it was like yeah, it. exactly. Okay, drinking so, alcohol. Right. And then fast forward, you come out the twelve month program. You yeah. Mean, you meet her ass, and she like let's try this crack. Yeah. See that's but how did she like get you like? Did she say it's gonna feel better when we have sex, or did like with what? No, oh, she just asked me if I wanted to get high. She said yeah. yeah. I mean, I was. I, I don't know. I think it was because of her. I was a little. 
pussy whip, sorry, my language, yeah. I guess. So, yeah. you know, I was just like, whatever, whatever she wanted me to do. Yeah. Yeah. At first, it was fine. It was fun, you know? But she ended up cheating on me, though. So that's... In the end, like, what happened? I got bad luck with females. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I found out she cheated on me. I kind of try to try to make it work for a little bit, but then she just kind of her attitude changed. Girl, all she wanted to do was get high, so I just I made it up parting ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. at this time, 23, where you living at? You still in out there in uh, Melvindale? No, no. Actually, real quick, I was gonna oh, see if. Uh, no, I just actually wanted to see if maybe we, we might even want to make this a part one and a part, part two. Part two, absolutely. Because yeah, um, that's what I wanted to get to that point for right. sure, yeah. but like, because I there's like so much more I could say after that, but right. I think we need to make it I a think part two. We are. We're yeah. Gonna make two parts. We're yeah. We're gonna make two parts. It's so